What we're going to be going over here is the manufacturing fixed overhead variances and we're going to be looking at the volume variance here for planned and unplanned production. Okay, so when we're dealing with variance analysis here, we're really looking at three different budgets or three different amounts that we have to deal with. So we're going to have, uh, at the beginning of the period here, you're going to establish some standard or static amount here for your budget. And then at the end of the period here, you're going to have determined some actual amount here for your budget or your numbers that you're going to be dealing with. And then uh, between what you have established here for your static amount here at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period, your actual amount here, you can determine your flexible budgeted amount. Okay, so starting with our standard or our static amount here that we'd establish at the beginning of the period, that would be uh, taking the budgeted quantity allowed. In this case, we're going to be dealing with the fixed overhead we're dealing with. So we're going to have some budgeted quantity allowed here on a per unit basis for some fixed overhead. And we take that time the budgeted or the cost or the unit price here for this fixed overhead. And what we mean by our budgeted amounts here uh, for quantities and costs, really they are standards that are established here for those quantities here. So uh, based on some standard amount, you're going to use that for your budgeting inputs here. Okay, so you beginning of a period, you set up some standard or static amount here. And this is really where you're uh, dealing with a standard amount that's allowed here. Okay, so now at the end of the period, this is where you, can, you determine your actual cost here. That would be the actual input quantity times the actual cost or price on a per unit basis. So that would be the actual costs that are incurred. Okay, so now at the end of the period, we know our actual costs. Beginning of the period, we have set up our standard or static amount. Now we can determine our flexible, flexible amount here. So that's really the actual input quantity that we have here from our actual results for the period times the budgeted cost or price. So that comes, our budgeted cost or price comes off our standard or our static uh, amount here that we budgeted. So the flexible is really... Uh, what we have for our actual input quantity here times our budgeted cost or price. So that's really the actual times some budgeted input. Okay, so that's our flexible budget. Okay, so now we're going to be dealing with just this fixed overhead here. So we're going to have a, a spending variance and a volume variance. So starting with our spending variance, that's really the difference between our actual and our flexible budgets here, or actual amount versus our, what we've established for our flexible budgeted amount here. And that is what we would just take, the spending variance would be the actual hours used. In this case, our fixed overhead is going to be based on some direct labor hours. So we take the actual hours that are used for the period times some actual fixed rate here. Okay, and then we would subtract from that the standard fixed rate that we have established times some denominator hours that we have here. So really these denominator hours here are the total budgeted direct labor hours that we'd be basing our budget on. So difference between actual hours used and the actual fixed overhead rate here uh, and subtract from it the fixed overhead rate times some denominator hours or total budgeted hours. So that's going to be our spending variance, again, between our actual, actual and our flexible amounts. Okay, so now for our volume variance, that's between our flexible amount here and our static, what we have budgeted. So that is, we're going to take our denominator hour, difference between our denominator hours or those total budgeted direct labor hours for the period, and we would, and then we'd be subtracting or looking at the difference between the denominator hours here and our standard hours allowed here based on our budgeted amount. So that difference times the standard fixed overhead rate. So that's going to give us our volume variance. Remember, volume variance is between the flexible and our static or standard amounts here. Okay, so once we know our spending variance and our volume variance, then we can break this, really this volume variance down between planned production and unplanned production variances. And we'll go through a problem now and just how we would do that. What we're going to be going over here is manufacturing fixed overhead costs and variances. And we're going to be looking at the volume variance here for planned and unplanned production. And we're going to be calculating that. 
So what we're going to be looking at here, we're going to be tracing this fixed overhead cost through some T accounts here, along with their associated formulas. So we'll start with our actual fixed cost here, and we're going to move them into a fixed overhead control account. Actually, it's a manufacturing overhead control account. And we're going to be looking at here is we're going to take the original budgeted uh, based amount here for some direct labor dollars for our fixed overhead. And we're going to be comparing it to some standard fixed overhead based on some planned production. And then remove this, uh, these fixed overhead uh, control account. We're going to move those amounts into a work in process control account here. And it's going to be based on some standard costs. So what we're going to have here, we're going to have our standard costs here are going to be different than our actual cost. And that's where our variances come up. So for, based on that difference, we're going to come up with a fixed overhead spending variance. And then we're going to have a production volume variance here. But we're further going to break this production volume variance down between some planned production volume variance and the unplanned production volume variance. So before we get into our calculations, let's go over here. And we'll start out with this reference key. So in our equations here, I've got it marked in red, the key, key amounts here. So uh, for our like SVOR, that stands for the standard variable overhead rate. Actually, we're not going to be using that. But then we got SFOR, that would be our stand, standard fixed overhead rate. And then AHU, those are the actual hours used. SHA, standard hours allowed. DH, those are the total budgeted direct hours for the period here. And those are referred to as the denominator hours because they are the denominator in our equation here to determine our standard fixed overhead rate. And then we have what they call the BH here, and that is re that would be the budget budgeted hours for the planned production. So what we're talking about here for this fixed over uh, fixed overhead rate, that we simply take our total fixed costs that we estimate for the period, and then we divide our total direct labor hours that we estimate for the period. So our total fixed cost we're looking at in this case was 240,000 and we have 4,800 total direct labor hours that we're looking at. So that is going to, division here is going to give us $50 per hour here for our fixed overhead cost, our fixed overhead cost. And you can look at it in terms of labor, our labor rate here, say, our, take our $50 per hour here, that fixed overhead rate here, $50 divided by a standard labor rate here, say $15 per hour. So what you're going to get here is 333%. So for every direct uh, hour of, of labor that we spent, 333% uh, is going to be included here as a fixed cost, a fixed labor rate, our fixed cost, overhead cost here. So we're really working with budgeted amounts and per hour rates when we're dealing with it. Just so we understand, uh, quite often you deal with these percentages here when you're talking about standard fixed overhead, uh, overhead rates here. All right, so that's what we're talking about. Okay, so now let's move over to our problem. Okay, so here's the case here. We're going to start with our actual fixed overhead cost for the period here at $242,500. Now, this is the case here we're going to be looking. We'll start out here with that $240,000. We're going to move into our fixed overhead control account. And that's simply taking, this is where the or original budget based on our budgeted direct labor dollars here. Those total hours, our total hours that we were looking, direct labor hours, excuse me. So we were talking about, in this case, we had that standard fixed overhead rate here of $50 times those uh, our total la uh, hours here, total budgeted labor hours here of 4,800 hours. So that amount here, $50 times 4,800 is gonna give us 240,000. And then for our uh, looking at our standard fixed overhead based on our planned production. So this is the case where you're going to stake your standard fixed overhead rate here of $50 and take it times that budget, the budgeted hours that we planned for the period here. We budgeted uh, to, for our planned production 4,420 hours. So $50 times that amount is going to give us uh, this fixed overhead uh, for our planned production at $221,000. Okay, so we have a difference here between our original budgeted for those total the labor, direct labor hours versus what we have for our planned production. And then we would, uh, for our work, it could move into our work and process account here. It's going to come in at the standard cost. And that's simply uh, our standard fixed overhead rate here, $50 per hour, times the standard 
hours allowed here. Those are for our standard costing here. We are only allowing 4,000 hours here. So that amount is gives us 200,000 here in our work and process. So you can see we have a difference here between our standard cost of 200,000 and our actual cost here at 242,500. So this is where we uh, come up with our variances here. So that's going to this it's going to be broken down here where we have our fixed overhead spending variance and we're going to calculate that here. We, this is you take your actual amount to $242,500 here and you subtract or you compare it to your budgeted amount here and that was that standard fixed overhead rate here of $50 per hour times those uh, denominator hours. So there's total budgeted direct labor hours here, 4,800 hours. That will give us 240,000. So the difference here is $2,500, which you're going to debit to your spending variance as an unfavorable amount because your actual amount here, 242,500, is greater than your budgeted amount here of 240,000. So you're over budget. So you. When you have these unfavorable amounts, you have to debit them in that account. Okay, so we've taken care of our spending variance. Now let's go over to our production volume variance. And that we simply take by looking at those den total denominator hours here, 4,800 hours, and compare them to the standard hours allowed here for our standard cost for the period here. And that was 4,000 hours. So 4,800, uh, we have 800 additional hours here are greater hours for those denominator hours or total budgeted direct labor hours are greater by 800 versus the standard hours allowed of 4,000. So uh, what we would do in this case, we just take those 800 hours here times the standard fixed overhead rate of $50. That's going to give us our production volume variance here at 40,000. So again, unfavorable because you've got the Total budgeted hours here are 800 greater than the standard hours allowed. Okay, so unfavorable. So we've really accounted for that variance here to 242,500. Looking at it as a credit here compared to our work and process standard cost of 200,000. And if you look at it debits and credits, you look at your debit here to work and process at 200,000, compare it to your production and add to it your production volume variance here, debit amount of 40,000, that brings you up to 240,000. And then moving over to your debit here for your spending variance, 2,500. So the total amount here at, in your debits adds up to 242,500. Same as you have for your actual cost here, 242,500. But that was just based on our production volume variance as a whole here. Now we can break, break this production volume variance down and let's look at that. We can break it down between our planned production and our unplanned production. That's what we're looking at as, as a volume variance. So let's look at case A here, our planned production. This is where uh, we would take our those denominator hours, those total 4,800 hours that we're looking at it, and compare it to the budgeted hours here, 4,420 hours. So in the difference here, we would take times our standard fixed overhead rate of $50 per hour. So that is going to give us an un, well, it, it's of $19,000. We're going to have a debit here of $19,000. Again, unfavorable because our budgeted hours here for the period of 4,420 is less than the de uh, our denom total denominator hours here at 4,800. So that's where we get up the break it up here for our planned production. That equals $19,000. And then the unplanned production that's simply taking your budgeted hours here again. Those were the, this is where the 4,420 hours and compare it to the standard hours allowed here for our standard of 4,000 uh, 4, hours. So there's a difference here of 420 hours. Budgeted hours are 420 hours more than our standard hours allowed. Again, you take it times your standard fixed overhead rate here of $50. That's going to give you $21,000 here. Again, an unfavorable uh, unfavorable amount here. Anytime you're debiting something, it's an unfavorable amount because in this case, our budgeted hours here that we have for the period 4,420 is greater than the standard hours allowed here, 4,000. So here's a case where you have your planned uh, variance here, 19,000, unfavorable, and your unplanned variance here, uh, production variance here, volume variance we're looking at, at 21,000. So you can see
uh, the 19,000 here, unfavorable, plus the 21,000 here, unfavorable again, equals the total 40,000 here, if we go up and look at it. So our production volume variance, 40,000 here, unfavorable, broken down as planned production volume variance, 19,000 unfavorable, plus the 21,000 here of the a, the plan production variance here, a volume variance of 19,000 versus an unplanned production variance here of 21,000. So 19,000 plus 21,000 equals our production volume variance here, 40,000 that we looked at. So that's how you break them down here between your planned production versus your un, unplanned production volume variance. And again, the total amounts that we've looked at here, if we've gone back, we were looking at that total amount here of, actually, let's look at it here. Total amount here was the 40,000 here of that production variance, the 19,000 here plus the 21,000 unplanned versus, and also looking at that $2,500 fixed spending variance. Total variance adds up to 42,500. So just remember here, this BH, that was our budgeted hours for the planned production. In this case, we had 4,420 budgeted hours for the planned production. And the DH here was those total budgeted hours we had for the period of 4,800. So that's where we, and, and for our planned production volume variance that we were compare, comparing our total budgeted direct labor hours to uh, the budget hours for the planned production times the standard fixed overhead rate here, $50 equal to 19,000 here. And then the unplanned production volume variance, that was simply taking the budgeted hours that was planned for production, the total budgeted hours, or excuse me, the budget hours here planned for the production here, 4,400, comparing it to the standard hours allowed here, 4,000. So the difference times your standard fixed overhead rate here, $50 per hour, gave you your unplanned volume production uh, volume variance here, 21,000. Okay, so that's how we broke down this production volume variance here, that 40,000. We broke it down, the total production volume variance here, 40,000, that was our uh, uh, total budgeted direct labor hours minus the, okay, or compared to the standard hours allocated times your standard fixed cost, and that was our total amount that we're looking at. We were able to break it down here between our planned production volume variance of 19,000 here in the unplanned production variance here of 21,000. Okay, so that's taking care of our planned versus our unplanned production variance. Okay, just to follow up to our plan then our unplanned uh, production volume variances here. So if we look at our T accounts here where we start out with our work in process here, the standard cost that we calculated here to be 200,000 for our fixed uh, overhead costs here and compare it to that uh, budgeted amount here for our production that based on those total uh, 4,800 hours that we had for the period here times the standard variable over rate, overhead rate here of $50 per hour, that gave us that $240,000 amount. So the difference of 40,000 here, that was the total production volume variance that we were looking at. Now, if we go and we uh, look at our the uh, planned production that was that $50 here, uh, uh, standard variable overhead rate times the bu actual budgeted hours here, 4,420, that gave us that 221,000 here. That was our planned production. So the difference between the 240,000 here, our original budgeted amount versus what we had for our planned production here, 221,000 is $19,000. And that's what we calculated to be our planned uh, volume variance that we, the planned production volume variance. And then the difference between our standard cost here, 200,000 versus what we have for our planned production here at 221,000 is 21,000. And that was our unplanned volume variance. Just make that point here. So in either case, in all cases here, you can see we have an un, unfavorable volume variance because what we had budgeted here at 240,000 is greater than our standard cost here, 200,000. And then it was split up between the 19,000 here of our planned uh, volume, production volume variance and the 21,000 here for the unplanned production volume variance. Okay, so that's, that's what we're looking at here, just in looking at our T accounts here, looking at our standard cost versus our original budgeted amount for the production here versus what we had for our planned production.
Okay, so that'll continue our, our dis, end our discussion.